People tell me my brushes don't make any sense, but they're wrong. My brushes make way more sense than what people typically do. This is my default round brush here, right? This thing has no frills. It gets me, a, it gives me a lot of control. This is where I end up doing the majority of my work, especially when I'm trying to do something smooth or organic, or I want to get some nice polish going on it. Uh, it is not complicated. It's a round brush with a couple of the settings tweaked, but got a different pressure sensitivity control than what most people do. I think when most people have a round brush, they're doing something like this. They're putting on transfer settings and they're saying that the opacity should get set to the pen pressure here, right? And um, this is what they, this is what they want. This is what the people are asking for, is a brush that when you press light, you get a nice light mark. When you press dark, you get a, a darker mark. But that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, that's how a pencil works, right? So if we're drawing, I love this kind of brush for digital drawing because it works like a mechanical pencil, which is my favorite way to draw things out. You know, you sketch things out loose, and then when you start wanting to pick a slightly darker line, you know, you push a little harder, and you start being able to get, like, your, uh, your goofy little guy in there. But... Um, I think that for painting, this doesn't make any sense at all. I can't control where the mark is going because I've got to, like, scale this brush up and down. And um, it feels like it's always covering too much. and It doesn't quite blend the way that I want to. I don't know. It, it feels wrong because it's, like, it's kind of like painting with a giant crayon. And I don't want a crayon. I want a, I want a paintbrush. And so I've got old Huckleberry here, and it essentially works like a, like a big paintbrush. I make my cursor kind of oversized here. And you can see with a light touch, I'm just getting the tip of the brush. And then pushing down gives me more of the body of the brush. The other property this thing has that makes it really useful to me is that I've got the flow turned down. I've got the opacity tuned a little bit down, and then I've got the flow turned down a lot. And what this allows me to do is kind of shape my stroke a little bit based off the direction. See, this stroke has a hard edge, and it's got a soft edge to it. Let's make it a little short stroke right here and you can see it that's side to side and this is up and down it ends kind of soft and so if we wanted the uh, boundaries of a shape to be soft we need to wiggle it back and forth and we end up with this kind of soft edge here and you can even with like 100 percent opacity you can actually go in and do some blending here and you can see how i get a little bit of blending going you turn the opacity down. I'm just using the number keys for the opacity here. And you can really start to smooth things out. You're just kind of grabbing colors and just pushing them. This is this is the easiest way of rendering I've ever tried. It, you're just grabbing colors and just nudging them around. It's like putting your fingers in clay. And so, you know, you lay out high opacity, you lay in kind of a pure tone, and then maybe turn the opacity down and you just kind of smush it out. And that smushing naturally leaves like these tool marks, these little steps throughout. And that is showing the motion of my hand to the viewer who's seen these paint marks. The way I'm moving my hand is affecting the way that the thing looks. That's what we want. We want like a kind of psychic connection between the brain and the canvas. We're seeing a human hand in motion here. We're seeing every single one of these brush strokes leaving behind these little divots all over the place. I think that looks cool. I love that look. That to me, it shows the sign of like a person was here. And so you can kind of, um, you know, you want to flatten out the lighting a little bit. You can grab it and, you know, sort of push out the the outer bounds of a, of a highlight or maybe turn the opacity down, scrub over the whole thing to, to bring it down a little bit, make a new little highlight to give it a nice sharp glean. And if you ever want to kill an edge, you can just go and smush over the edge and you can get like a nice lost and found edge wherever you need to. And so it, it stops being about like planning ahead and it starts to become this kind of intuitive flow of just getting to like push things around. You wanna make a cut, uh, like a divot or something, you make a cut with a, with a hard edge here and then you just kind of smooth out the other edge. And you can see what I'm doing is really super simple. I'm making strokes like this. And when you make strokes like this with the opacity turned down, a brush that's a little oversized, you get these nice soft overlapping marks with these soft terminals on them. And they create like a nice soft blending. So you can kind of like rub your thumb across the clay and smooth something out. But using the same brush, if we turn the opacity up a little bit and we run the stroke the other way, long ways here, back and forth like this, that'll cut an edge. So we can smooth an edge 
and we can cut it all with the same brush. So if I ever want to like make a divot in something, I can push in a crease and then I can smooth out one side and just a couple of strokes later, I can have myself like a nice bit of surface texture. I can go and manually paint in all the surface texture, all the curves, all of the, the divots, and I have total control over all of my edges, which is what gives it that nice painterly vibe. And to me, this is just what painting is, is like, using a digital brush that works like a traditional paintbrush. That's the main brush. This is my round brush. It's easy. But what if I want to get a little fancier with it? Well, I made a little brush pack here. It's just got 12 of them. Some of them are custom made. Um, I, I made all the brush tips here. Some of them are kind of reproduced from default Photoshop stuff or things I like from other people's packs, but I, I decided to remake them from scratch with my own custom shape on them and then I tuned all of the opacity and flow settings for each of these brushes in the brush pack. So this one works more or less like the um, the round one but it's got a little bit of a crusty edge on it. So instead of fading away into a smooth edge we get a little bit of a crusty edge but like the philosophy behind how you use the brush is exactly the same as the round one except for this one leaves a little bit of painterly grit behind. And then I've got a round version of that same one, triangular one for, for your, uh, you know, if you want some, some extra little corners left over. This one is the one, Bushy is the one that really demonstrates the philosophy of this here because it's designed to have a hard edge running laterally like up and down and then it terminates at these like soft kind of bushy edges. When you use that, that means that you're, you're going to get like a, a softer, more broken up and to your strokes so when you zigzag back and forth you get this really like naturally soft edge and then you but you don't lose that ability to kind of cut in a harder mark this is all the same brush it's not leaving behind some sort of cold overly rendered mark it's getting something that feels painterly brushy it shows motion it shows action it shows intention that's good shit. and so i've got a whole pack of stuff like this it's all built on that philosophy. You can go ahead and download it for free off my gum road. I wanted to go over that basic philosophy of how I do my mark making because I don't know, people keep picking it up and telling me it doesn't make any sense. It might have been, honestly, <laughs> on the closing note. If you download this pack before and it didn't make sense to you, give it a try. I updated it because I originally made this in CS6 and it didn't include the opacity and flow settings by default in the brush. So I've, I've gone and remade it in a modern version of Photoshop to make sure that these opacity and flow settings get locked in. Give that a try. Uh, let me know how it goes. I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, if you make any cool paints with my brush packs, make sure to link me on social media. I'd love to see that. All right. Have a good one. Goodbye.